Hey everyone, uh, Dan here. So uh, I had a few people ask me if I'd throw together a short video or show how this is, uh, how I uh, airbrush lures. So I said I'd do that. So um, kind of go through these real quick. Uh, this one here is actually a 110 jerk bait. Uh, this is like two to six feet, give or take for depth, for dive. Uh, this one here, uh, is a DS10. We've got two of those right now here and uh, These are closer to that 10 foot uh, range obviously DS10 and uh, They say they go 10 feet. I don't know. I haven't fished these yet So I, I can't tell you if that's truly what they do um, But we'll find out uh, on this first one, uh, this is the 110 jerkbait, uh, try to get this in a little bit in focus there. So that one, uh, that's actually, uh, for color scheme, that's a Candio, uh, Wicked, uh, Kratex, uh, color. It's actually a Kratex, the brand is Candio, uh, uh, and ultimately these are a lot thinner paints. And so, uh, that's that one. And then the second one, uh, this one is actually the Wicked line, which is very common uh, colors uh, used in uh, airbrushing. Uh, and then the third one, uh, this one here, is a uh, folk art color shift. You can kind of see the color kind of shifting there a little bit. And ultimately, when you spray multiple layers um, with any of these colors, really, it gives you that depth. Uh, looking bait. So this one here uh, It's really cool uh, when it's done uh, They're all kind of neat in their own way. So um, Those are the three colors. I'm actually spraying three different ones. So the first one That orange that I just sprayed, that's the, uh, it's called FW, uh, it's an actual ink, uh, that number 687, orange flame, I sprayed on the candy bait, so I don't have a candy orange yet in my uh, list of paints, so I went with an ink on that orange, so I did, for those that spray, I did mix with 4030 prior. And that already set that time so all right all right on to the second bait so this is the wicked uh, pearl line green bait uh, for the top and now we're gonna spray the belly uh, on this one I'm running uh, Comart uh, transparent orange uh, for the airbrushers out there um, it's the Comart uh, transparent orange and then I did mix it with some 4030 to uh, a little more stick to it here, so. Don't forget to uh, lower your air pressure when you're spraying Tomar paint. Or it will bubble fast. You can't spray it very thick either. It's a really thin paint. It's like water. So there's definitely a trick to it. 
definitely learn that. So there's kind of what it looks like right now. That's one layer. I know somebody's going to ask online, what's your PSI set at? That's a common question. Um, I'm at the one mark, so about 10. About 10 PSI on the car mark spray here. There's my airbrush, by the way. You wonder what I'm spraying with. I bought a Clips uh, HP SBS uh, side sprayer, 1 8 inch or 1 8 uh, ounce cup. I find it works really well. I like this side spraying brush uh, because I can see the whole bait. Uh, a lot of people like to use the, um, I think it's like one half ounce total cup size to be um, uh, where the cup's actually on top of the airbrush. Uh, here's an example. So this is the other airbrush that you can use right there, HP, CS, Iwata, half ounce cup, you can see the difference in that, it's, you compare them, it <laughs> looks huge. Uh, I sprayed with this one for the first two months, and you can see how big that, that is, so when you're looking at a bait, you're trying to spray, yeah, you can quickly see how much it covers the bait. You can't even hardly see the thing. So I uh, think this actually works well for spraying base coat. Like all three of these baits, I sprayed a white base coat, golden white base coat, right? Titanium white base coat, golden brand. Then I threw down some wicked pearl white on all three baits. And so then ultimately we got to the, the lime greens and then we're now spraying the orange. But I just wanted to show you that because there is a difference. People ask about it. What uh, airbrush do you use? Uh, it's a very common question in the airbrush world. And airbrushers get it. So there's a lot of debate out there in the airbrush land. So what airbrush is best? Um, I'm a Iwata fan myself. Um, I know there's several airbrushers out there that use um, the Patriot, Badger Patriot, I think is the name, if I get that right. And that's a pretty common airbrush uh, that people like uh, outside of the Iwata Eclipse. In fact, I know a couple, I'd say professional airbrushers, and they use a uh, combination of Badger and Iwata. They'll actually jump back and forth between the two airbrush options. So there's the uh, final kind of orange coat on this one. Uh, this is a Conmart orange, transparent orange that I sprayed there. I might throw a little bit extra down just because I'm looking for a little bit more orange look on this bait on the violet belly. So I'll throw another, this would be like three coats of Conmart. how light that sprays. You spray that too too much and you play clean up afterwards because then it ruins the bait for a little bit anyway until you fix it. So I'm just heat setting here. You can hear that sound. It's a heat setting. It's a Wagner heat gun. I just use that setting too and I just heat it up quick. Not too close to the bait or you'll boil the paint. Yes, I've done it. Wonderful bubbles all over the place. So there you go. That's all you do. Quick heat set. So that one's done. Moving on. All right. So we're on to the third bait, the color shift bait. Uh, I'm spraying folk art color shift. Uh, this is the orange flash. Um, with this one, it's a very thick paint. And so with this one, I actually have to use a reducer. I use a 4012 or 4011 uh, wicked reducer on this to to actually be able to spray this even through an air gun. Um, it's a very thick, very uh, thick. And so I'm running, uh, for those that are wondering, because I know there's a few that will, uh, about 18 PSI on this one.
heat set after every coat. Every now and then I layer the paint on too thick. Uh, that's probably early airbrushing years. Uh, they say that's the most common thing you learn in airbrushing. Less is more. Easier said than done. So I'm actually, this is two coats, but there's a couple spots on this one. I am trying to blend the orange and the green. You can see how I'm going almost halfway up the bait on this to get that blend. And it'll be a light, little lighter towards the, you know, the halfway mark on the bait. And then the belly side is pretty solid orange, transparent here. And then on the sides, I'm just a light spray. There it is. That's what I was looking for. So we'll stop right there. I'll heat set this. I'll show you what it looks like. Quick. So I'll kind of start there. Yeah, you can see it there. Once I uh, clear coat this, which is the last step, well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> There's several steps uh, towards the end. Um, but once I clear coat that, uh, it really pops. Even more than what this video shows right now. All right. All right, this is the uh, next step uh, for a perch, a uh, version of a perch anyway, uh, step. Uh, this paint here I'm spraying is uh, Wicked Detail Moss Green. Uh, here's what that looks like. Uh, so it's a Wicked Detail Moss Green. Uh, it's a very popular color. Uh, this is pretty much every airbrusher in the world uh, that paints lures of any kind. Uh, is utilizing uh, detail moss green on their baits. Um, the reason is is it helps uh, give a bait kind of a real look. And so I'm just going to be spraying this uh, over the top of the bait, lightly over the top of the bait, and then right on its edge of the bait. And you can kind of see how that changes the look a little bit. So we'll probably heat set that actually, and then uh, so uh, kind of see what one one layer looks like anyway there. Nice even coat across the top of the bait, a little on the edge of the bait, and call it a good. Uh, so that one's done. And uh, we'll catch the next couple in here. All right, so. Try to angle that towards you. Kind of see a little bit more color changes. There's the. Don't sit on one spot with the airbrush very long. You, you move that brush pretty quick. Um, consistently, I guess would be the word I'd use, over the top of the bait. If you don't do that, you will get little tiny dots of paint, or what we, uh, pooling of paint of sorts. And then it is what it is, right? So there you go, that one's done already. That's our wicked bait. All right, that one's done. So we'll just move that one aside. We'll jump over to this one. This is that color shift bait. I'm also spraying wicked now on it. Same detail moss green, but it'll have a different effect to the paint now. 
So we're using different paints here on each of these baits. I like the look of that. I might just stop right there because I'm trying to keep some of that color shift in play there. So I'm going to stop there and there's our moss green sprayed on all three baits. There we go. So that's what they look like. All right. So you can tell I, these look a little different than when you last uh, saw the uh, baits. So right now, uh, this is a step that uh, we can add some scale looks to the bait. Uh, gives it some depth once you clear coat, this really stands out. So um, right now I'm gonna spray Wicked Colors. It's a Wicked Pearl Black. Uh, it has a little metallic look to it. Um, and it looks uh, fantastic uh, after clear coating. And so we'll be spraying uh, Wicked uh, uh, here, uh, Pearl Black on each of the baits. Uh, right now you can see they got clipped on. I've got what's called a loofah on them right now uh, to spray the baits uh, and give that scale pattern look. And then the other bait I'll show you here shortly, I actually ran a mesh uh, on that just to give it a different look. Uh, oftentimes when you airbrush it's fun to uh, do something different with one of the baits that you're spraying just to see what it looks like when you're done. Uh, and so that color shift bait is definitely that bait. So with this one, I'm just lightly spraying the back and then the edge of the bait and letting the, the uh, detail uh, pearl black there just kind of fall down the sides a little bit. Slight overspray and then moving on. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like when we get done. This one I clamp just a little funny. back a little bit, down the edge a little bit. By doing that, it will give a slight scale pattern. That's good enough on that one, which you probably can't really see in the, on the video right now. This one looks like a complete mess, doesn't it? Uh, it's a mesh. It's a totally different look when it gets done. So we'll see what it looks like. We're gambling here a little bit. I'll get that top a little bit heavier. And then I'll just let it fall down. It looks pretty good now. I think we'll call it good. It's so hard to tell at times. I can tell it's getting a little darker on the sides. So. There's definitely enough on there, I think. All right, so that's the mesh and loofah step there on those three baits with some Wicked Pearl Black. All right, so we removed the loofah from the one bait. Uh, this is our candy colored uh, bait. And I think you can see the scales there. They're pretty prominent depending on where the light's at hitting it. Just kind of adjust it a little bit here and there so you can see it. So there's the scale pattern we get off that. And now we'll check out these other ones. I have no idea. Let's see how they turn out. Number two, uh, that's our wicked colors. Yeah, you can definitely see the scale on there. A little lighter on that one. I didn't spray that one quite as heavy. And now we'll see what this mesh looks like. Uh, this will be a different look for sure. Too. Yep, there you go. So, a 
definitely a different look than that. step and I'm going to throw some perch look to it here using a stencil of sorts and we're just going to spray the stencil and the trick is lining this thing up. The cool part about paint and lures which is a good thing for me it don't have to be perfect so just getting it lined up, try to get both sides somewhat symmetrical, you know, but outside of that, it don't have to be perfect. Well, you try to get it close, but I'll tell you right now, it don't happen. There's very few that can get it. So we added the kind of the perch look there and we're just finishing that up. So we've kind of got both sides now sprayed with that perch look. And then what we'll do is to kind of try to blend some of this. Uh, we'll go ahead and just spray the top of the bait here quick and it will darken the bait up just a little bit. Together. There we go. Starting to look a little bit familiar to many, I'm sure. Hopefully. That's the idea, anyway. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, just because I've got this color in play right now, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little detail here. stencil part done now so uh, we have uh, the three baits uh, with stencil on it and uh, now we're gonna turn around here and hit the top of these baits just a little bit doesn't take much This one's got that crackle pattern on it versus the scale looking pattern. So a little different look there. Somebody would probably ask uh, what air compressor are you running there? 
Uh, that's a uh, California air tool, air compressor. Uh, it's the, I want to say it's the four gallon one. Uh, so it does not fire off all too often, uh, which if I was airbrushing any amount of hours at all, uh, it's totally worth it. Just to not have to hear that thing run every 10 minutes uh, for someone that's serious about brushing uh, lures. Uh, another one I know Harbor Freight sells, uh, I believe it's Fortress or Fortis. I'm going to get that wrong probably, but similar uh, air compressor and it's just as quiet uh, from my understanding from others that use it. This is the ultra quiet uh, air compressor, four gallon California air tools. Show you what those look like so far. All right, so there we go. Candy paints right here. Then it was the wicked paint right here. And then the color shift by folk art right here. Of course, this one's got the crackle stencil. Looks a little different. All right. Uh, for those that airbrush, I'm running, looks like 10 PSI right now with this Wicked Pearl Black. Just gonna highlight the eyes just a little bit here. There we go. Kind of the tricky part. Sometimes the airbrush doesn't work the way you want it to. You end up getting way more paint than you want. When it looks about right, you just stop. You don't try to go any further. Otherwise, usually you have a disaster. That's been my experience anyway. For those that airbrush, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Devils in the detail here with airbrushing, particularly. So we're just going to highlight a little bit here. Throw down a little white. This is wicked white that I'm running right now. Probably noticed right there. There's a little chip on the paint, so that can happen uh, when you're using uh, stencils and uh, what have you. It can scratch the paint. How do we fix that kind of thing? So usually you just throw a little paint over the top of it. Um, sometimes, like when I'm painting like lures like these right now, I'm just gonna fish them. So a little scratch is not gonna affect the bait performance and the fish don't notice that, right? But certainly fishermen that buy baits will notice that. So um, on that particular bait, um, there's an actually a fix to that that I learned here recently, um, recent as in this last week, and from fellow airbrush members. And so I'm gonna go ahead and deploy that plan and uh, use that extra step to help prevent scratches on my baits. Sometimes white is kind of a tricky color to spray. It likes to clog the airbrush. It can't sit very long at all. Any amount of time and you're you're gonna have a dry airbrush. Thankfully it doesn't happen all too often, but when it does, there we go. There, did you hear that? <laughs> Goes from working uh, at nothing at all and boom. There we go, now we're back in business. So just a little light coat, kind of highlight the throat area. There 
we go. Good enough on that one. Moving on. When you're on video, you're kind of under the microscope for any blemishes or what have you. So um, there's a Facebook group to prevent that. And so they posted that recently. A lot of guys asked that question uh, that are airbrushing in that first year or so. And I would be in that category. So I will start using another step. People ask, well, how many steps are there to paint a lure? Um, well, you've seen a few of the steps in these videos that I'm posting here, but ultimately, I haven't counted. And to be honest, I think it's well over 30. <laughs> it's a lot. Now we're on uh, one of the finishing steps for what we're making and kind of put the eyes on. This is kind of where the fish comes to life a little bit. That's our Wicked Colors bait. For those lure painters that are probably wondering where I'm getting these eyes from, these are the real 4D, I think they're called, eyes. These particular eyes I get from uh, Backwater uh, website. So that's what they look like on the bait. The Wicked Bait. Looks pretty wicked. I'll we'll help this 110 come to life here. These eyes are from backwater as well. This is the iridescent eye. There's the 110 with iridescent eyes from Backwater. This is our Folk Art Color Shift bait. We'll have the Color Shift bait come to life here. Get the eyes put in. Whoops. Amazingly, I caught that. There we go.
pretty good looking bait. I think that'll catch some fish. This product here, believe it or not, has a use in lure painting. And for some guys that are watching this video, they know why I'm using that. Because I wasn't wearing gloves and your hands have oils on them. And ultimately, this product helps protect the bait. It's also the trick to reduce the number of scratches on the bait itself when you're using stencils. So I just learned this. Now this is the cool part about lure painting. It is endless as far as the, the tricks of the trade, if you will, and it does take a while to learn them. Um, I just started by watching YouTube videos. I'm just giving a quick spray of this Pledge Revive floor gloss and hitting the baits. Uh, thin coat, I, to be honest, I don't have a clue how much you're supposed to put on. Um, I say thin coat, and I'm kind of spraying quite a bit here, but anyway, um, it dries. And so, yeah, I'm just throwing a little coat of that on there. It does, the baits do look pretty nice. I've never sprayed this before. Uh, this is the first time, and of course I did it on video, why not? Um, and uh, try it out here. So that's the folk art uh, bait that we sprayed, DS-10. And uh, remember the 110 jerk bait was uh, candy paints. And then, let's see, I look here once. Yeah, so I'll spray this one quick. The plan is to let these dry, heat set them a little bit, let them dry before we UV coat. I use aluminum light, uh, aluminum light UV uh, to clear coat my baits. And I put them under a, uh, a UV light. So I'm gonna try spraying this before I do that. A lot of guys online are saying this is the way to go. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna give it a try. Why not? All right, so those all been sprayed sprayed uh, with Pledge, revive it floor glass. And we'll give them a little heat set. All right, so at this point, I've sprayed it with Pledge, uh, all three baits, um, coated all of them, and heat set all of them, and a little bit of eye time as well. And uh, before we uh, clear coat, uh, the baits. All right. Well, I'm gonna put those three baits in the little light UV clear coat. I've got a two pound jar here, and uh, highly recommend it. Done pound jar. Multitude of different ways to put this on between brushing it on and dipping it. Uh, today we're gonna dip the baits, and then once we get done dipping them in this stuff, then we turn around. Let them sit for a little bit, uh, drip off some of the extra UV, and then ultimately they land in the light box. And they'll be in there for, in my situation, I don't know about others, but it um, seems like it takes about two hours in this setup, this nail cure set setup when I put two of them together. Uh, of course, you use duct tape to do that because what other product would suffice so yeah and uh, once you put those together you throw the lights together you can throw a couple dull rods across it and hang some bait i'll run anywhere from six to eight baits at a time in there um, i think guys say two to three um, per nail light up to four i've heard so that's what i've done and it usually does take two hours uh, 
with uh, two lights together like this. So that's what I do anyway. I'll look for any feedback on that. If others have another um, better way to do it. I've seen a couple of YouTube videos that post how they put those together uh, with a wood setup and timer light, which is pretty cool. And then I'll just hang them after I dip them. We'll just hang them over here in an old box I had that before I had a UV light set up in this aftermarket UV setup. It did not work as well as the nail curing light. In fact, it didn't work at all because it was 405 uh, NM light versus 365 NM light source. So you must have 365 as per the bottle or it will not work. Uh, does not cure. You can see that on there for curing times. So yeah. They've been dripping here for a good 10 minutes, actually probably closer to 20 minutes at this point. So literally not dripping anymore. So I find at this point is the best point now to literally wait this long before you move them over to the UV light. And it helps keep the eyelets um, clear. Otherwise the UV will get stuck in the eyelets if it's still dripping. And ultimately you get to use a nail and hammer to get the eyelets uh, clear. Uh, so, we'll take them now and we'll move them over to the, the UV light. Alright, so I've cleared out the eyelets with a paper clip on each of the baits and uh, brought them over from the UV Lumi Light dip uh, over to the nail cure <laughs> process here uh, under the UV light of 365 NM. Uh, reminder, you have to use 365 NM. You cannot use... Uh, what I found out to be 405 does not uh, mean that your bait's going to cure faster. In fact, your bait won't cure at all. Uh, it will still be sticky uh, even after three hours of cure time in a 405. So I run 365 NMs uh, per the manufacturer guidelines, and they'll sit in this light uh, probably about two hours. And then at about two hour mark, uh, they'll be ready to come back out of the UV light and move to the next stage in the process. All right, it's uh, been a couple hours now, so I'm just gonna pull the top off here and the baits are done. So there's bait one. Next one. Let's just see what's. So there's the crackle pattern on the bait. So that's our full cart color shift versus the Wicked, see the scales on there, and then the candy color on the 110. Three of them. Let's 
see kind of what they look like. Thanks for watching.